Welcome back into the shop, everybody, here on the uh, Rancho Urban Homesteading in the Hood, as I like to call it. And uh, I've done a lot of work recently, and let me introduce the Marantz 4430 Quadraphonic Unit. And it is probably the most massive and complex undertaking of restoration and rehabilitation that I have uh, undertaken. Mainly because if you know anything about quadraphonic sound, it was hot for a minute in the 1970s. Built on one theory, if two channels is good with two discrete, discrete microphones recording, one from left side and one from right side of the stage, giving an experience of being right in the middle of the audience when you listen on records or uh, CDs or over the air, well, then why not have two more channels located behind us, right? So you have the early, the very early surround sound where you would get four discrete inputs uh, into your ears for a more, well, immersive <laughs> experience. Before we tear into this, to take a second to ask you, if you've not subscribed and you do love vintage audio, you love to have some laughs, you love a variety channel that does a lot of gifs and things. I'm a Gemini in Cancer, I'm on the cusp, all right? I got my fingers in everything, right? I, I'm interested in everything under the sun. We do metal detecting, we do uh, uh, vintage audio restoration and listening experience. Obviously, there's playlists with hundreds of videos down there. Rescuing units, consoles, uh, thrift shop finds. So much good stuff and a lot of restorations. In addition to that, there is also a live streaming, demonstration cooking in Rancho Kitchen Stadium, homesteading. I've got a big orchard here with probably uh, 20 different fruit trees. And our goal here is to pr produce tw uh, about a ton of fruit per year. Most of which, of course, we give away where it is needed. But uh, vintage audio will always be a huge part of that, as will travel and uh, live streaming. So make sure you subscribe and then hit that doodly 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 little bell so you are aware when a new video, a community post, or something drops here. Love to you to be a part of it. Well, in our 12th year, we have a lot of subscribers, many of which enjoy vintage audio and what's none what's old again is new again it's like the younger generations discovering that they don't like to look at a black box or a three ounce black box that they pay five hundred dollars for with led readouts it's, uh, hold on. what's old is new again they're seeking out this old equipment and buying it in droves why because of the cool factor of it and also because the fidelity was so great I want to tell you, I've started this project well over a year ago. It got involved in some, you know, some personal issues and also uh, a lot going on. Otherwise, writing a book and doing uh, doing some other uh, some other various projects. I got behind a little bit on the work here on the rancho. I paid a severe price for that this summer. I worked my sack off here, as I like to say, to get uh, to get things back in an orderly way. So. Now it's time to go back. I'm going to tell you what uh, what I found here and where we still have to go from this point forward. It's a little warm today, so let me start up my Circa 1928 General Electric oscillating fan. It itself weighs 25 pounds, but it works as well as the day that it was manufactured. How many things have lasted almost 100 years? That you can say that. Yeah, she jiggles a little bit, but she does a good job. Probably won't like the noise too much on here. Let's see. Yeah, I think we'll just leave that off for the time for the time being. This is the unit up close and personal. And when I got the unit, it looked like somebody had done some work. Oops. We have a floppy selfie stick here. It looked like somebody had done some work inside of the unit and the unit wasn't working properly the main reason being that there was uh, there were solder drips that were shorting out places on the board i was really shocked to see that because uh, it takes a pretty bold person to tear into one of these units and that's the problem with a lot of the hobby is it attracts the uh, one-shot johnnies that come in and think well i'm just going to have some fun 
changing out some parts and gee what could go wrong well a lot of things can go wrong if you're sloppy in your soldering as the person did that was here and I'll turn this over so you can see the bottom here let me get that position I tell you I uh, I hate to lift this thing when I got down and did a full uh, visual inspection on the board I noticed that there's some work that was done on here, but there was so some solder bridging which had occurred. And when I straightened that out, I found that I removed the short and it came out of protection. These have a protective relay built into them. So the pot starting the unit, if, if the uh, unit does a self-test and it finds out that things uh, something's not copostatic, it won't come out of the protection and well it'll just idle there you'll have the pretty lights but that's about all you have well i fixed that problem and i got that addressed and then um i set about working on the uh, uh recapping the power board down here which i did and i really didn't have any issues with that uh it was uh it took a little while to do but you really want to take your time Marantz uh, develops units that are built for technicians, unlike a lot of vintage audio companies. They didn't really care about who had to work on it in the aftermarket. Marantz wanted to make sure that if there was a problem, you just pick up the whole board, unscrew it, unsolder the connections, and then just put a new board in and resolder it, and you're good to go. They didn't want to have technicians fiddling around trying to figure out oh well maybe this transistor went bad or maybe this uh, if coils bad or gee maybe it's this capacitor down here that's gone bad or, or gee i don't know maybe it's a one of a thousand maybe a zener diode blew well maybe just pull the whole board and then take it from there so that was the first step and then we had some initial success i just pop the face plate back on and I like to remove the face plate early on because this is a very expensive item especially for a rare unit like the 4430 quadraphonic unit I usually take that off and remove it and put it aside but I wanted to give you a little look at the uh, front of the unit now I found out one thing Marantz has very excellent and I do mean excellent tuner circuits here for uh, FM and it works great so I was very happy that once we fixed the solder bridges it came out of connection and she started firing up pretty good here Never. with a good tuner really nice fidelity give a little more volume here and it's been abolished anyway so ladies and gentlemen hey Right and I have a lousy little antenna on. Very clean. Really good pickup. She does fire on full stereo. Excellent, excellent tuner. Ninety-seven point seven, the river. How clean that is. Plus, that reduces the time your HR department spends administering benefits. Businesses. Yeah, your HR department. How did we ever get along with that HR department? Nothing's gonna stop it. Eight passes and two night hookers. Pretty nice, huh? Or it brings people the benefits of the first thing, but they've been the point of this is gauge. Really good. Really nice unit. From uh, Antonio, Texas. Texas is in the house. Still a lot of good stuff on FM. I haven't even bothered with the uh, 
I haven't even bothered with the uh, AM DAW, but let's take a look. That let's look at the next step that I did here. I also early on removed the uh, adapter that plugs into the side. And this is really this is really amazingly early plug-in technology. The SQA1 module. And this is really the brains that separates the front and rear uh, channels here. And this is a must. These are very hard to find. And if you do find them, they're going to charge you a fortune for these. So I wanted to keep this separate while the unit, I pulled it out from underneath. You can, you can access it externally with the bottom plate on. I pulled it out because I didn't want it to get uh, damaged in all of the rebuilding that's being done. This is a very, very uh, difficult thing to find. So you want to really take care of everything when you're doing a rebuilding project. That you don't have butterfingers and that you take your time. The next thing you notice here, let me grab, let me see if I got a little uh, pointer here I can use. Here, we'll just, we'll just use, we'll just use this little lighter here as a pointer. We have two two discrete side two two sides of the uh, unit here. We have the uh, two channels here, and we have two different channels here. So, like I said, you have double, double, double the routing and traffic going on in this unit than you do in a single AM/FM stereo unit. So, the next task was actually changing out our output the power board was done you can see that down here that was done already so the next task was to carefully remove the heat sink first from one side and uh, totally finish uh, changing out our uh, electrolytics on this side and it was a good thing i did because uh, some of these tested is uh, poor values and if you don't have a uh, tester here I have a good one that I highly recommend here and this is a blue ESR tester for uh, whether uh, whether a capacitor is good or bad and I highly suggest that you get one of these I'm not a part changer I rarely change out parts I have units from 1958 1959 my pioneer that i haven't done anything to it okay nor do i plan to it just depends sometimes you might have a run of manufacturer that uh, is a little weaker than other ones but moran's use really good nichicon nikon uh, chemical and uh, nippon chemical corporation and also elna for the so for the most part things are pretty good in addition and one of my big gripes is when uh, especially people that are new to the hobby come in and they see oh there's so many oh there's so many caps to be changed out here now i'm so excited because i can test out my soldering skills and they look at every single board on here and they're like oh man this is gonna be great and then they end up messing it up. Look, there's nothing really going on in a in, in a in a tuner section. All right, with all the uh, RF coils, intermediate frequency, there's nothing going on here that requires a change out of any. This is all very low voltage stuff. The real hint of where the action is is as the caps get bigger in size, then of course there's more going on in these uh, particular areas. But as far as this stuff, don't bother with this, with these tuner sections and stuff, okay? Don't start going in and fiddling with, oh, this looks like something that can be turned, or that looks like something that can be turned. Really, you're going to turn yourself, you're going to turn your project into a disaster, okay? So the next thing that I did was to actually carefully remove this board. Marantz does things pretty intelligently. I could get those screws. And then once I once I tipped the unit in, I could unscrew, unscrew this and create some daylight between the heat sink here. You can see uh, on the back these big beefy output, big Sylvania output uh uh, transistors and they're probably not original I don't know I haven't really uh, looked at closely 
over here to see. Yeah, they're saying, so they've, we've had some replacements that have been put in. So somebody knew what they were doing over time. I can't always say that in a lot of the cases. But anyway, I was able to separate the board from the heat sink here carefully. You don't want to break any wires. And going from behind with the desoldering iron, I was able to uh, change out the, uh, the caps in here. I didn't catch every single one of them. Well, I guess I did. I think I got that one too, but I think I got them. I got them all. Then I went ahead and did the same thing to this side over here, being very careful to um, to not create any problems. After doing that, then it's time that we started to begin. We we're just at a point of starting to look at some of the cosmetic issues because sound-wise, it's all there. And let's talk about what some of those issues are. One problem we have is with the legendary Marantz flywheel, and this uh, this really gives some really nice sensitive. It's such a well-designed system. It's nice and heavy and beefy, and it really moves things along in a nice manner. But we do have stall points on here where, um, you know, we need to clean up the rail that the uh, pointer indicator rides on and that's a pretty common thing that has to be done with these units uh you can also see there's some there's some lighting issues here that have to be resolved and i don't know if it's probably not showing up for you guys on uh camera this is of course a, a smartphone camera but in real life this is greenish okay and it's not the blue that you're seeing on your camera what on your uh, computer, your pad, or your phone. So what that means is the paper behind here has yellowed out and it's turned, uh, it's uh, created like a greenish tint to things. So that has to be taken out. Plus we have to get in here and lubricate all of our parts. All of our switches in here have to be lubricated. Our base, our treble, whatever dimension is. I haven't even figured out what the, what half of these things are for. But it's critical that um, uh, it be done carefully. And this whole front uh, has to be removed. I want to be able to do that without getting into the tuner string nightmare. And you can see a little bit of tuner string. And let me tell you, when you have to go ahead... And restring tuner strings, it is like one of the things that you think would be easy. But it's a very difficult thing to get right. You can bust them. You can see it's protected in there. It has to be done the right way with the right tensions. You know what? No thanks. I'd rather not deal with that. Okay. So we're going to have to remove this. Get all of these buttons off. Get this, uh, get this subplate removed. And then we're going to go in here and uh, replace our paper, get the glass all cleaned up, and get the lights changed out. Marantz is also unique in that they use fuse lamps. I'm not going to put LEDs into this unit. Some people, oh, I like the LEDs. It makes a brighter glow. You want to restore for authenticity. Or do you want to restore because it's uh, to you, it's something that you dig? Well, that's okay, too. All right, I'm not going to fault you for that, but I go for authenticity. So we still, we're about halfway through our labors here on this beautiful unit. And uh, then we'll uh, just have finish up polish, lubricating, set the offsets, and do the last things we have to do here. Well, I sure enjoyed having you in today, and do take do take time to check out the uh, vintage audio playlists and all the restorations. I'm quite sure that you will enjoy them, and about 95% of them went well, but yeah, don't talk to me about the Luxman Suckface unit, because I fought that motor control, 
And guess what? At the end of the day, <laughs> I lost on that unit. So it's not everything's been a victory around here, okay? We've had some setbacks. If you put explosion in the shop, with uh, you'll see where a cap blew up in that shop here and it was catastrophic. That's why I always wear eye protection when I'm firing up units and uh, especially if I'm reforming the caps and things like that. So do be a part of it. Do subscribe. We've got a lot of work ahead to do on this unit. Got also figured, and I don't know if I'm gonna, if ever going to get a record player to try a quad record. I don't know. We're going to be be doing all that, but we're sure going to bring this back to uh, top form. Anyway, thumbs up or appreciate it. Again, make sure you hit that bell. Uh, more more chapters ahead here as we build rebuild the Marantz 4430 quadraphonic unit. Thanks everybody.